In the historical books of tragic aviation accidents, some etch themselves into our collective memories. Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 is one such tale, not just because the catastrophic crash claimed 157 lives, but because of the mysterious questions it raised about how a software flaw could be so fatal. What went wrong? Were the uncanny similarities with the Lion's Air Flight 610 crash just a mere coincidence? Or was there a horrific truth hiding beneath the technological prowess of the Boeing 737 MAX series? Let's find out. In the spring of 2019, Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302, carrying 157 souls from 35 nations, met a fate both tragic and mysterious. Just minutes after taking off from Addis Ababa, the Boeing 737 MAX aircraft that was set to land in Nairobi was reduced to an almost unrecognizable rubble of debris when it crashed near the town of Bushoftu. It took excavators to dig the debris of the plane out of the ground. The impact was so intense that it almost completely disappeared into the earth. Just by looking at the pictures, you can imagine how everything was absolutely destroyed. The impact must have been extreme. Interestingly, just five months prior, a similar Boeing 737 MAX aircraft flying under the name of Lion's Air had plunged into the depths of the Java Sea, claiming 189 lives. Suspicions arose that both these crashes might be connected. Was there more to these dreadful events? Was it a mere coincidence? Were there technical problems? Or a deceitful system of concealment and cover-up? Boeing, the leading aircraft manufacturer at the time, was put under the investigative spotlight after two brand new aircrafts crashed in five months, killing 346. As the investigation moved further, it quickly became clear the cause was not a mere coincidence, but rather a glitch in the flight computer system. The investigations focused on potential flaws in the MCAS system and the aircraft's overall design and certification process. The Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, MCAS, was implicated in both the Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 crash and the Lion Air Flight 610 crash. MCAS is a software system designed to automatically adjust the aircraft's angle of attack to prevent stalling, particularly during steep turns or in certain flight conditions. The problem with the MCAS system stemmed from its reliance on data from a single angle of attack, AOA sensor. If this sensor provided incorrect or erroneous data, it could trigger MCAS to incorrectly push the aircraft's nose down, potentially leading to a dangerous dive. In both crashes, investigators found that faulty AOA sensor data triggered the MCAS system to repeatedly and erroneously push. The aircraft's nose down, despite the pilot's attempts to correct the situation. Furthermore, there were concerns about the level of pilot training and awareness regarding the MCAS system. Pilots were not adequately informed about the system's existence or how to override it in emergencies. These factors contributed to the difficulties faced by the flight crews in managing the emergencies on both flights. How could it be that a giant like Boeing could let this happen? Boeing stands as a titan in the aerospace industry with a rich history spanning over a century. Founded in 1916 in Seattle, Washington by William Boeing, the company has played a pivotal role in shaping the course of aviation history. From its early days, producing seaplanes to its current status as a leading manufacturer of commercial jetliners, military aircraft, and space systems, Boeing's influence on global aviation is profound. The company's commitment to innovation has led to iconic aircraft such as the Boeing 747, the world's first jumbo jet, and the Boeing 787 Dreamliner, renowned for its fuel efficiency and passenger comfort. Hundreds of Boeing aircraft fly and land every day all across the globe. How could such a critical flaw go unnoticed? How did the authorities let this pass by? After the second crash, the Chinese and Europeans grounded the plane. The American Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, followed suit the following day. At a press conference, Boeing CEO Dennis Mullenberg downplayed the role of the software, and he seemed to be hoping for support from regulators. I think it's really important that we all focus on letting the investigation process run its due course. Our job is to focus on safety, not on speculation. He left many questions unanswered and was forced to resign eight months later. The investigation took a devious turn when it was revealed that shortly after the first crash, the U.S. air traffic regulator, the FAA, prepared a risk analysis. 
the analysis concluded that if the 737 MAX were to be used worldwide as planned, and this was to go on for about 45 years, about 15 such crashes were to be expected. A disaster would occur every three years. About three months after this analysis, 157 lives were lost in the second crash, and for many, their remains were never found. This simply means that Boeing and the FAA were willing to let such an incident occur every three years. Mark Mueller, the attorney who represented many victims' relatives of the second crash, stated, I can't fathom treating human lives so recklessly. That's an unacceptable analysis. Death is 100% for the guy who's killed. You don't build airplanes with the expectation or an acceptance of the statistic that such and such can survive three years, and then there's going to be a crash. That's bad. If one builds an airplane accepting the principle that you can accept one crash every three years, that's an outrageous principle. It sure is outrageous and a hard pill to swallow for the mourning relatives of the deceased. But if they were aware of the consequences of installing such faulty software, why would they install it in the first place? It was developed mainly to compete with a new version of the A320 from Airbus. The NEO was an immediate hit with better engines boasting greater fuel economy. Boeing ran the risk of falling behind and needed less fuel-hungry engines requiring a larger size. Instead of building a new aircraft, Boeing decided to use an economy version with the 737 MAX. The engine was mounted further forward and, above all, higher. The top edge even protrudes beyond the wing. This meant the aircraft tended to pull upward when subjected to high thrust, which could lead to dangerous flight positions. That's why the MCAS software was installed. In such cases, it automatically adjusts the elevator, pressing the nose downward. In the crashes, it was pushed down too far and too forcefully. An airplane doesn't fly on its own, right? What were the pilots doing when the software wasn't doing its job? Couldn't they override the software? Or were they not trained enough to do so? In another shocking revelation, a few internal emails came to light. One email between Boeing employees stated, to make the transition to the new model, there will not be any type of simulator training required. Boeing will not allow that to happen. Another email shows the pompous attitude of the employees when they could manipulate the demands of simulator training from the airlines or authorities. It said, looks like my Jedi mind trick worked again. It is safe to assume that if the airlines and regulators had been more inclined toward training, the pilots better at maneuvering the software, they could have had a chance to avoid the crashes. It became clear after the first crash that the secret software had put pilots into an impossible situation. Still, no simulator training was developed for this purpose. Why would such a prestigious airline take such a chance? Pilots are rotated through all the planes that are at an airline's disposal. That means even if the airline were to purchase just two 737 MAX, it would have to train all the pilots to use that plane. And an airline has more than just 10 pilots, usually it's hundreds, if not more. Imagine the cost of such a pilot training. The airline saved millions of dollars. The question remains, was it worth risking countless lives to save those millions? Six months after the second crash in October 2019, the FAA noticed that Boeing had failed to disclose crucial documents for months. Since the crash in Ethiopia, Boeing has manufactured more than 400 aircraft that were not allowed to be delivered. It was obvious that after such a major fiasco, the regulators found more problems than just software flaws. It is unfathomable that it took two crashes and a loss of more than 300 lives for the world to take note of such a flaw in the system. Does that mean that Boeing has been manufacturing faulty airplanes for quite some time and it is only now that these faults have come under suspicion? Have the regulators also been complacent all this while? Who is to blame? Tell us in the comment section about your thoughts on this horrendous series of incidents. We hope this video gave you an insight into what transpired with the story of Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302. For us to keep bringing you such astonishing stories like this video and subscribe to our channel.